In my reverse rainbow challenge video, I said that if we hit 150 likes, I would make a video on the top 10 trash piles in Borderlands history. And even though that's what you clicked on, I'm sorry to say that I won't be doing that video. Despite hitting the like goal, I just feel like if I actually made a video on that, then it would basically just be me milking views out of you guys, and that's totally not okay. So coming in at number 10, we have the Firestone Skag Pile near TK's house. I picked this one because it just always, at least in my opinion, is the first trash pile I ever break whenever I play Borderlands 1, so this pile definitely holds a special place in my heart and deserves the number 10 spot. Coming in at the number 9 spot is a risky pick, but a pick nonetheless. It is the Cardboard Jacks in Digistruct Peak, and before you argue that these aren't trash piles, you're wrong because you can actually break them and they do give you ammo. And I mean, honestly, this one is only this low on the list due to how hard I tear up every time I break it because it reminds me that Jack at one point was going to be the villain of Borderlands 3, but anyway, speaking of Borderlands 3, it's the Covenant Pass trash pile, but more specifically, it's the one right near where you spawn in the middle of this car wreckage, and I mean, you know, it's safe to say that my lore knowledge is pathetic, however, I can imagine a family of Skag using this pile as their personal dumping zone after a long day of work. It's also full of robot parts, which obviously is a telltale sign that the Lord himself, Wilhelm, has probably crossed paths with this pile, you know, once or twice, which means I could have probably walked into Wilhelm, but I didn't. And for number 7, I placed the Tundra Express Snowman Head. Yep, that's right boys, we're really running that low on ideas. Now the first time you break this head, you get Flint's Tinderbox, but after that it just gives you a regular trash pile loot, and uh, I mean, the snowman also tells you to piss off, which... Yeah, that's toxic. Number 6 is the one, the only, Desolation's Edge. Yeah, now granted Necrotfeo as a whole just bores me into oblivion, this location in particular is a double bubble fucking wombo combo as we are graced with two piles guarding this cave. I have no clue what's in this cave, but I mean obviously it's not a classic style raid boss, so uh, yeah, that's why this pile is so low on the list, baby! And now we're butt slamming over to the pre-sequel for this next one because it's the rock chat outside of Deadlifts Arena, and I picked this one because he was all alone and very clearly needed a friend because he was being outcasted by his fellow boulder bros. So you know me being the little uh, nice guy I am, I <laughs> sat down to him and say, hey man, let's watch the sun together, fuck those guys. And then, you know, later on that night we went on to have very intimate sex. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Now making a very lackluster leap to number four and it's the Underdome. Yeah, fuck this DLC. In at number 3, I put the dig piles in Origins, because I just really enjoy the look of them and overall the rewards they can give, and yeah, I mean, it just really makes me appreciate the map even more every time I dig one of these suckers up. And speaking of suckers, it's number 2 fuckers, and it's the Lodge Cellar Piles. There's spots, there's guts, there's fish, what's not to love about this place? It's like a fucking ass scene on TV commercial, and you know, I especially love the animations that play when you open these bad boys up, which in my opinion just really adds to the immersion overall, I would say. And ladies and gentlemen, I am no Bruce Buffer, but this is the moment you have all been waiting for, because at number one is Bloodwing's head from Borderlands 2. And I know, I know, you're probably thinking to yourself, but Epic, that's not a trash pile, don't be silly. But after you pop that baby, you can actually pick up the Claptrap upgrade, which technically results in you defeating the bunker, and then that leads into you eventually killing the warrior. So if you think about it, this trash pile in particular single-handedly killed a vault monster, making it the number one trash pile in Borderlands history. And with that out of the way, that's gonna do it for this video. I can't tell you how much I regret making this video, however, we are going to continue the wheel of pain, baby, so if this video hits 500 likes, we will do top 10 doorways in Borderlands history. Please don't like this, please. I, I really did not enjoy making this video. Please don't like it.